And this, uh, this time right now is called the three weeks where we're in the midst of, of the 17th of Tammuz, which uh, was on Tuesday. And that culminates after 21 days on the, the day of Tisha B'Av, on the 9th of Av. And it's called the three weeks. It's a time of really deep introspection. It's not a time of uh, uh, for uh, uh, sadness and depression like we spoke about like a couple of weeks ago. But it's a time of possibility and maybe what we would call bitterness. Like we, we said that bitterness is not necessarily something that's supposed to get us down, but it's supposed to ignite us to see more and to um, and to open up different possibilities and different channels that are found within us. And that's what these three weeks are really meant to do. They're meant to ignite something more uh, within a time of introspection, introspection back on history, on Jewish history, on what happened and what it, you know, and what is right. And it's meant to bring us to a greater and deeper um, and, and deeper awareness. So I want to speak about today what I was very, very drawn to this week. And it's not necessarily the three weeks. We're going to talk about that more in a, in, in, like in the future, but like about what we read during the time of the three weeks, and that is the Parsha of Pinchas. And the Parsha of Pinchas is known to be a very healing week. And in fact, in the Zohar, the whole the whole uh, Zohar is like involved with just a very deep healing, right? And it's very much connected to that energy of the three weeks where it's going deep and it's supposed to heal something which is uh, repetitive and it's a constant which is going on inside of us and we want to break that cycle and that's what really Pinchas does he breaks a cycle that no one knows how to put an end to or how to put a stop to and that is with the slaying of Zimri ben Salu who was the head of the tribe of Shimon who took for himself a, a Midianite a Moabite sorry and in front of Moshe and Aaron, he was like, okay, so who allowed, you know, your wife, you know, the daughter of Yitzro, while this woman is, is not permitted to me. And while the Moabites were sent by Bilam and, and the kings of Moab to seduce the, the, the males, the, the Israelite males to, uh, to basically fail in, in, in the sin of the, of the covenant. And with, with that, uh, there was a, a plague, right, that the Torah speaks about in the Parsha. And who's the one to put a stop to it? It was this man called Pinchas, who in fact turned into an angel. And he really was an angel. He had that that ability, had that potential within him, within him. He was the soul of Elijah. And later on, he was reincarnated into the to another Elijah that we learned that there's, there's various incarnations of Eliyahu Navi of Elijah. But this man, Pirchas, goes ahead and he stops the he stops the plague. He stops everything from 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 taking hold, from everything from hitting the the fan in the worst possible way by slaying this man Zimri and this woman Kozbi Batsur and with that putting an end to the epidemic, right? And with that basically being the zealot for the for the wrath that god had for the people so the question that's asked is how does zimri go ahead and conduct himself in this way like who was this man who was the the leader of the of a tribe the leader of the tribe of shimon and he goes ahead and he does something which is forbidden something which is like the you know something which is clear cut, like, you know, out of the picture. And he goes ahead and he offers this. So before we go into the answer, tonight we're going to discuss what is the difference between destiny and fate. And in this Parsha, we really learn a lot about what destiny is versus fate. And the two of them sound very much alike, right? Destiny, for most people, you'll ask them, destiny fate it's the same thing right it doesn't doesn't really make a difference but 
The truth is that they're very different. They're similar, but they're also very different. And, you know, and I would just ask you to think about what is the difference? You know, I'd like to hear from you. What do you feel would be the difference between destiny and fate? And this is all as a prelude to understanding what Pinchas and, and, and a lot of, but deep, but ultimately it's about understanding what do these two words mean, which we take, you know, perhaps not as uh, uh, significant, significantly as we should. Um, uh, Mark, you want to? Give it a go. Yeah, I, I would say that destiny is like, I think of it as like a script that God has written. God has, has a plan and that plan and we're fulfilling God's plan and that's destiny. Um, fate is a harder one for me to, to come in and, and, and define, but I'm, I can't at this moment define fate. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Avigail? I agree with you, Mark. Beautifully stated. Uh, fate, I think, is when you don't listen to your destiny, then you're fated to experience um, an unpleasant result. Yeah, that there's God's choice and your choice if they're not in agreement. So you're looking at fate as something which is a little bit like fateful, like when we say fateful, woo, like dooms, you know, like kind of that. I'm not, I'm not putting words in your mouth or saying that or insinuating anything negative that you're, but like, that's, that's what resonates. And that that's yes. fair enough. Okay. Yes, you're, you're correct. Okay. Thank you. Rivka. I think you're on mute there. Okay, destiny, Hashem's plan, but Hashem also gives us the um, free will. So with destiny, we can choose. We can go to Yetzir Hara, Yetzir Tov. Um, we can, we, the path is open. Hashem has a plan, but we make choices. And, and what While is fate is, is just without choice. Ooh, okay. So that could go either way, what I'm hearing from that. Like it could go like it could go negatively, it could go positively. Correct. Okay. 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 Very good. Okay. So I'd like to but before we answer that question of Pinchas and Zimri and stop like we're getting to the to the concept of fate. And the reason I'm connecting the two, and as we're gonna like explore this deeper. Uh, Zimri, right, and Pinchas both had a fate that they were uh, that that they were coming to, right? One found their fate in the hands of Pinchas, right? He died basically, and Zimri also had a fateful type of uh, uh, situation, right? That that he was in, right? And their their destiny just kind of like inter. Were, was interweaving in both of them finding their fate. And so with that, let's just go back to like defining what fate is. So in the words, uh, in the Hebrew language, the word for fate is goral, which we find later on in the Parsha, that the land of Israel was divided by a goral, by a fate. In other words, every tribe had their fateful plot of land in the land of Israel, right? And each household had their lot, their fateful lot within that that tr that tribal land, right? So for the land of Naphtali, they had the people of Naphtali were, you know, they had a certain amount of of of, of people, uh, right? They had a certain a certain uh, type of land, right? That was a little bit more agricultural, perhaps. 
you know, and other tribes had less agri agricultural land, but they had more people and they had more livestock, etc. The the land was very much divided in accordance to the amount, to the census of the tribes, as well as to the needs of the tribes. So there was a fate, the, the Torah calls it. It was a goral that each land, that each tribe had. And so the word for fate in Hebrew means a goral, fate, right? And what do we know about a goral? What do we know about, uh, about goral? Literally, goral means a lot, right? So when you throw a lot and you're like, well, I, I get this, I receive that, right? And, and people basically could have the wrong type of lot right associations and it's one of the biggest it's 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 one of the biggest addictions in the world and what is that called it's called gambling where you are basically well my lot lucky 7 or you know or the blackjack you know table or the or the this or that you know i'm meant to receive this you know this money or i'm main, I'm, I'm meant to win over here and a lot is basically a lottery that somebody is allotted something. And the truth is that everything that we are have, right. And are meant to have meant to really receive is connected to this level of lot of lottery. In other words, it's not a coincidence that we are sitting in the place that we're sitting, right. That we are, you know, have the life that we have, right? Think the way that we think, right? It's because there's a lottery that's there, right? That God drew and God knew that your neshama, that, that your specific soul and for all of its rectification and all of its past lives needs to be in this place, in this time and doing this particular thing, right? So that's, a lot, but it's not really fully a lot because that's there. That's a lot, which is really a not an end all necessarily, but it is also it is a destiny. So, in other words, before getting to the lot, before getting to the place that we're actually fully meant to receive which we already have which we are getting to but we already have that in potentiality we go through what we call destiny and we go through life's travels we go through you know going here for that and then going going there for that going to you know getting it right sometimes and getting it completely wrong sometimes and that destiny and, and the destiny is meant to be there in order to in order to eventually get to the lot. In other words, it is part of the script, but it's not the end all, right? So the destiny is the, the storyline that we're going through. And sometimes the storyline is a mistaken story, which in the story what we were talking about, uh, talking about the, the, the death of Zimri and we're asking the question, how did this prince of the tribe of Shimon make such a mistake? So the answer is because he had to make that mistake. And even that mistake, that sin was a part of his destiny for him to reach his lot. Now I'm going to explain that a little bit. So there's a book called the, the Ishbitzer Rebbe. And in very, very beautiful, profound teachings of the Ishbitzer Rebbe, he teaches in this, in, in this week's Parsha, he asks this question and he says as follows, he says, how could he fail? How could he go? How could he do this thing? And so he brings from his Rebbe, who's called Reb Tzadok HaKohen, in, in a book called Tzidka Satzadik, and he, and he says that, there are basically 10 levels of a person uh, falling into sin, right? There's basically 
a situation that we have no self-control. So we just fall into whatever, you know, uh, uh, you know, type of pattern that we're used to, to falling into. And sometimes we have a little bit more of a, you know, uh, of an ability to hold ourselves back a little more. And we have a little bit more and a little bit more. And he says that there's, there's, there's a level where a person is not even like, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even like, it wouldn't cross their mind, right. To, to do a certain thing, but then it happens. So basically this is brought down in, in, in Hasidus and it's a little bit controversial. And he says that even the sin was ordained by Hashem. In other words, it not to be confused that God wanted the sin, but God and and if, if God knows what we're going to choose, so then, you know, isn't it? So how do we actually have even free choice? And that's the famous old question. But basically, that even the mistake itself is part of the destiny. It's not the fate, but it's part of the destiny. And he said that this man, Koz, uh, this man uh, Zimri, what he did is that he went through this sin, right? And he fell into it. And then the answer is that he had to fall into it. Just like Yehuda married his daughter-in-law, Tamar, who who was all dressed up and hidden, and it and it, and it was like, how did he fall for her? She was she was dressed up as a as a as a it says a harlot on the road, and the Ramban says on that like, don't think that Yehuda was some like you know guy that was just like walked out of a a bar or something like God forbid this is Yehuda the tribe Shifte Ka right who's a king it's just he had he, that tamar was his soulmate and the only way that th that these sparks of godliness could actually come together is in this is in this type of a union and it's not something that one would choose and one should ever choose you know in in a in a rational way but once it happened that was also destined. And it's almost like with, and we find that with, uh, with um, Lot, right? Cohabitating with his own daughters. How could that happen? And who do they, who do they have? Actually, they have Moab, right? Those Moabites who did all these things, right? That they had this like deep darkness that was there, but that was eventually transformed with a soul of Ru of Rus, of Ruth, that became a beautiful convert and a beacon of light. And that was the grandmother of King David. So there was some deep transformation that had to happen that only God knows. And this is this, there's a Pasuk that says, Nora Alila Livne Adam, that God just makes these mistakes happen, but again. Not to be confused with the mistakes that we allow ourselves to fall into. This is not, we're not talking about that. Like a pattern that someone has, like, okay, they fall into that. Well, you know, you're just consistently doing that. You're not holding yourself back. So don't say like God want, after that happens, yes, God wants you to do that. And, and God wanted you to do that. But now what are you actually choosing? And what are the, you know, type of. Uh, parameters that you're going to put around this? What is the border that you're going to put around it? But but if a person is, you know, putting on all of the borders, right? And then something does happen that was ordained, right? And as, this is a very controversial thing. But that's a destiny to read, to get someone to their fate. Uh, Michelle? So what was the benefit of Zimri to his soul Very good. to, to yeah. fall into this? How did that so help? I'm his... going gonna, gonna to tell you what the Arizal says. Okay. So the Arizal says this and he said, and he gives like a caution. He's like, this is controversial, everyone. And he basically says that Zimri, uh, 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 Zimri Ben Sur like his grandfather was Shlumiel ben Suri Shaddai. 
and 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 so he goes back in the lineage of reincarnations and he basically says that when Sh we're talking about the head of the tribe of Shimon right so Shimon was very very aggressive in his nature the tribe of Shimon and we find that that when when they go into to to fight to get Yosef right or or right they get Shimon is is was was aggressive and to, to Shrem and, and, and Jacob doesn't really even bless Shimon right, and Levi. But uh, so it says that Shimon married Dina. And Dina was his, like, basically his, like, sister. But at that point, they were, like, they were allowed to be married. It was a whole discussion. But anyways, Dina, after, after Shimon saved her from Shechem, she said, on the condition that you marry me. So those two souls then came together. And what was is that Dina absorbed some of what we call the klipa, the, the, the dark side of who she was raped by, who was Shechem, Ben Hamor, right, from Shechem. And that, that those two souls were were basically destined for each other, in a sense. Who, Shem and Dina? Uh, Dina and uh, Dina and Shimon, right? Okay, right. And uh, and so it says that the um, this uh, woman, uh, Cosby Cosby Batsur, is connected to Shlumiel Ben Suri Shaddai, that they were connected, and in truth. This woman was Cosby Ben Sur's soulmate because she was this almost fixing a reincarnation of of Dina. This is what the Arizal says. So he had a very wow. valid he had a very valid point of saying, "Listen, sh she's my she's my soulmate." And the Arizal says, he says, "We can't say this loud. We can't." This this isn't to be publicized, right? Because then what's going to happen every next next you know nice guy you know just go go you know college and sees you know Samantha and what are oh she's my soul no you know we're meant to we're meant to marry Jewish and we're meant to you know and that's that's very you know that's very important to have that connection and that lineage but like basically in there in situations there are situations. And I personally know situations that that are like deep situations that there that there were sparks over there to be raised up. And so there's there was like this fate, right? That was that that they were getting to. That's what the Arizal says. And that's what the Ishbitzer says. Ishbitzer says that it's not something that we could ever even think about and do. But if but if it happens then that's a part of destiny that leads us to our fate. We never thought that our fate would be there. But it's a part of us getting to our level of fate. And the level of fate essentially is a level which is above das, above our understanding. So if we think that we know what fate is, what our fate is, then we have no clue. Because our fate is beyond our that and so there's a there's a Talmudic saying in tractate Brachot and it says that Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai that before he died he was laying there and he was like the leader of the Jewish people that after the destruction of the second temple he helped save Torah right and he lays there on his deathbed and he says I don't know where they're taking me I don't know which way they're taking me they're taking me to to, to heaven or the opposite or down, right? Where am I, where, where are they going to take? And, and his students are like, Rebbe, like what, what you have done in your lifetime and the level that you're on, like where's the doubt over here? Of course you're going to heaven. The highest place is in heaven. So what was this, so what was this question? So he gave an answer, but what was his question? Like what was he even, where, was he saying this out of humility? No. Where, where was he actually coming from? And so it's explained 
it's explained in Hasidus that we actually, when we are involved in what we are involved with in this lifetime, it could be destiny that we're involved with and we're thinking that it's fate. Right? Whereas we haven't even touched on where our true fate is. Because if it's coming from just our, what we call Tam Vadas, our, our intellect, our understanding, then, then maybe he was learning Torah because he, because he loved intellect or he's doing good things because he was just a kind person. But where's fate? Fate meet, meets the place that, that is above our understanding. And, and it's actually explained that there's two levels in fate. There's a level of what we call emuna, the simple level of fate, that before we even enter the day, every single day, we start off with emuna. Right? right? We start off with emuna because that's the beginning of fate. That's goal, right? But then there's a level of fate, which is a level of fate, which is on the level of what we call the surrounding light, sovev kolam. That there is, that there's something that is way above me, and on a person, on on an internal level, on a soul level, that's the level within us which is called yechida, which is the level of the essence, right? That fifth part of our soul, which is above intellect. That's the level of yechida. From the level of yechida, that's where our fate is. That's the goral. That's the that's the true the deepest truth of who we are. And so we find in this parsha basically Pinchas going completely in with his fate, Zimri going in with his fate, right? And later on we find that the that the land is divided by those who are right by the Goral. It's going to people's fate. So it's a very what we call fateful parasha, Pinchas, right? What's the difference between Pinchas and and um and uh, uh, Suri, right? Ben Suri Shaddai. What was the difference between the two? So Pinchas basically was looking at this man and he was like, I don't know what's going on over here. I don't know that much, but I know that this man hasn't really truly tried enough. And there was, there was a lot of judgment that was hanging over Pinchas. It wasn't a simple act that he was doing. And, uh, you know, the commentaries say that he had 15 miracles and there were so many loopholes about with Pinchas. He could have, you know, what he was doing was, and Moshe and Ari, everyone is there and they're silent. They're looking, they're looking at what's going on. Why wasn't Moshe even doing anything? So the Arizal says, why didn't Moshe do anything? Because Moshe saw that they were really soulmates. That's what the Arizal says. So, so Moshe was like, I don't know what to do. I don't. I don't know God's big plan. So Moshe was quiet. Pinchas came in with like a. He came in like a little kid almost, and he was like, "What's going on over here? What are these? What, what you know? This is like a boot. This is a her-. like he stood up. He's like, this is this is right. I don't. I don't know what's going on out there. But this man should have known better. He should have done things differently. And it was almost like a battle between these two men's fate." Where their destinies brought them together, right? Pinchas, like, and and Zimri. And at the end of the day, who was correct? It was Pinchas. Because at the end of the day, yes, she had sparks that were connected to him of of her of their soul root, right? But on the other hand, he could have gone deeper and revealed something much loftier if he would have actually. Uh, resisted this temptation and he could have actually raised up her sparks in a different way so he could have gone deeper it's not an easy task and it's only for the biggest souls that were able to do such a deep rectification but that's that's who was standing against who zimri and then pinchas they were both battling for their fate and at the end what did pinchas receive he became an angel he became eternal. That his soul, that his soul power 
was was re- revealed having the self sacrifice we call him serious nefesh to go way beyond his intellect and to say yes god does not want this and i'm going to stand up to the word of hashem he he went above his intellect that wasn't something that anyone could understand moshe couldn't do that because he was in the, in the realm of intellect he understood what was going on but pinchas was like i don't know but he went all in and he put a a stop to it uh michelle um how could a human soul become an angel and uh is that really an elevation because then there's a loss of free will great question so so the the truth is that um there are angels that are also part human and that's that's the that's, was that the original I'm sorry, was that the original plan or was that a hybrid that That's came hybrid, about? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a hybrid uh it's a hybrid level. But it's it's a level of actually receiving a very deep assistance from from an angel and and having the angel like spirit within a, a human, right? So and, what happens when the hybrid angel finishes its mission? So that's the thing. They they don't really finish their mission. So it says that that there was another hybrid and he was called Hanoch. And he was the 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 great great grandson of, of of Seth. Right? And it says that God took him because he saw the daughters of and he he was gonna he was gonna lose his his purity. And it says that he was upgraded to become an angel, and that's the angel Matat. Right, which is basically very, you know, archangel. So Hanoch became this, 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 this became this very bit, this, this angel, and this, this happens, right, in in, in various ways. But we find that El- Elijah passes and he becomes afterwards. He's raised up to heaven, right? But he has the soul of Pinchas, and Pinchas has the soul of Nadav and Aviu within him. He has two other souls. And it says that those two, th- these three souls, then came within the soul of Elijah, Eliyahu and Navi, right? Who lived way later on, right? And so they had these very, very deep, elevated souls. That's that's what the Zohar says. And, um, and, and it's basically an uh, elevation of the name Ban of the lower. Uh, from the lower to the higher rev- revelation where, you know, the below becomes elevated. And so, yeah, but it's a good point. Like he loses the, the, the free will. And in a sense, in a sense he did. And in fact, it says that Elijah lost his free will because he's, he's looked upon a little bit negatively because he said that, look at what your people did. When when he was in the story of of Izevel, right, and and the and the um, the worshippers of the Baal, right, they were there on and by by Mount Carmel, and they put out the altars, and Elijah said, you know, let's go, and the the people of the Baal brought all of their sacrifices, and and. Elijah brought his sacrifice, right? And God answered him. But before that, he said, look at look at what the people are doing. And God said, well, you know, you're going to have to come back and, and actually witness them, witness that they're doing good. You know, you're going to be there on, on Passover. You're going to be there by a circumcision, you know, by a brit milad, because you're going to see like, look, they are good. And so it, be, so it did, it did be, it was a little bit of a chore, uh, for uh, for Eli for Eliyahu, but uh, so so yeah, I'm sorry. So Pinchas um did normally what the law would do. Um, no, he so didn't, he didn't do what the law did. He actually went no, 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 no. right, but he wasn't like a law enforcement individual. Right. Like he he stepped into a different role. 
um, through free will. It was his choice. So could that have something to do with the loss of the free will? Because, I don't know, was there a little bit of overstepping the bounds of, uh, I don't know, what was available to him or? Well, he um, was, he was actually through his choice, he became an eternal Cohen. Like he became an eternal, right? Priest. In other words, like because of this like major step, he was, he was upgraded, right? To the level of now acting within that level of highest, his highest, his fate, his love, that's what he was coming from. So for his entire life now, and you know, even after it, Eliyahu is the one that comes and, and, you know, tells us about Mashiach is the one that basically he is above nature. Like he's the Malach Abris. He's the one that's like there that's coming be, because he completely changed his nature. So his nature is now changed. Right. And it's not, something that most people are able to reach, but it's the highest level, right? Of what one is able to ascend to. So, but, so the path then, I'm sorry, of becoming a priest, um, kind of, uh, uh, has some restriction to it. So it like kind of, he needed, I don't know, did he need some type of control? Um, did he need to learn some type of control for this zealous type of energy? And so so there was a dis there's a discipline to the path of the Kohen, right? So that that energy was channeled then um in a way that maybe everyone would view as proper and holy uh, that, am i saying be, nonsense or is there some some that, truth to that but that's that's exactly the point the point is that by acting beyond what he thought was possible right in this situation right every every person has their uh contradictory type of way of 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 actually fully stepping into themselves the highest of themselves but it goes in but but there's a contradictory motion over here because Pinchas in truth was a Cohen that means he's an ish chesed he's a person of kindness but for him to go ahead and to slay and to have this zealotry it seems like it's a complete opposite of what his internal self is and that's the truth also with us like when we have like you know a certain built-in characteristic trait so that does and and it's a positive characteristic trait it doesn't mean that that is where our greatest uh, what we call tikkun is fixing is it could be like that's our that's the place that we shine that's the place that we can you know but like it's it is in the difficult places it's in the it's it's by definition in the difficult places and we go through all this destiny to basically say oh this is happening to me again and that's happening to me again and it's all hitting upon the same point and it's different people in different phases of life that are basically just you know igniting the same response within us but they're just coming as different people and they're all part of our destiny to to ignite us to go into and and to actually face the lesson right and what we're supposed to actually fully uh uh embody right Thank what you. we're supposed to embody because that is going to come back to us because we can go on through various lifetimes with a destiny, but the soul has a fate in many lifetimes. And God says to Daniel at the end of the book of Daniel, says, Lech legoral, legoral So he gets a blessing. Go to your lot till the end of days. Which is Yamin is right. So, 
Yamin. Yamin is Yamin is right. In other words, it's connected. Yes. So Yamin means days, but it also means to the right, to to the highest love embrace of the Creator. That is holding the soul, and it's the root of the soul, right? Before it came down into this incarnation, right? Through various reincarnations, etc. So Daniel is God tells him, go and rest, right? Yamin, go for eternal life because you've you've reached that lot, right? That lottery. So there's the lot of the soul, the destiny of the soul. Sorry, the, there's the fate of the soul, the goral of the soul. And that's the highest fate, really, that we can reach. And the, the process is the destiny, right? And so, uh, and so we have different people in same circumstances, again, in same, you know, but they just come around in different ways. And they're teaching us the lesson. And once we get the lesson, we get a little closer to the ultimate fate, which is really there all along. And it's just unveiling all of the, the deep layers and the and the, the big external and gook that's that's get gets a little bit lighter and lighter as the soul is able to fully shine on the level of fate. And that's what Pinchas basically did. He was shining forth the essence of his soul. The level of Yechida was, was, was just jump-started within this individual to the point, obviously he had preparation before, to the point that God is like, wow, boom, there you go. Right? So later on in the, in the Parsha, we learn about the fate, the Goral of the tribes. So I want to share with you a portion from the Talmud in, in Baba Basra. So the, the Talmud says that when the Ach Begoral Techalik Arts that, that we learn about dividing, about dividing the land. So it says that how is it divided? So in fact, it was divided with a lot, but it was divided also by what is called the Urim Betumim, which are the, the, the breastplate of the high priest. And it says that Elazar would look, right, would, would, would stand there. And Joshua, right, when the land was divided, was standing in, in back of them, of him. And, and through divine spirit, right, he would say it. So he would say the land of Zevulun has, the, has, you know, this lot. And... You know, he got this lot of of being, you know, on the border of, you know, by the by the water. Blah, blah. The other one, you know, Naphtali, they had this lot. And that's what Elazar would proclaim, the high priest, through the Urim Metumim, right? And there would be the lot over there. And so the Talmud says that in the future, in the days to come, and this is from the book of Yechezkel, it says that in the days to come, that each person, that each, each um, tribe, is not so first of all there isn't there, there's also going to be a division of of the of the worth of the financial worth of each lot in other words like if there's a, an area that's a little bit more expensive so they would get maybe a little less of it and another area would get be, be more of it it's divided like more, you know in 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 a certain way and then it says that the, the division of this uh, world is not like the division of Olam Abba, meaning the, the time of the redemption. That in this world, that in this world, a person may have what is called a white field, which is, you know, which is um, a field of like uh, of wheat, for example, or barley. And so he doesn't have orchards. And a person that has orchard doesn't have, you know, wheat and barley because they're different areas. But it says in the world to come, that each person is going to have a portion, that each tribe is going to have a portion within the land. 
In other words, they're going to have like miniature divisions within the land. So each tribe is going to have, you know, let's say they have the, the, the area of the Kinneret, you know, in the area of that. But they're also going to have an area in the desert. You know, maybe they'll go there in the in the winter time, right? And somewhere in the desert, you're somewhere else in Jews, they're gonna go to the area in near the Hermon. And they're gonna have like each each tribe is gonna have their you know interconnected tribe. That's what it says, that they're gonna be interconnected. There's gonna be a lot of little dots inside. It's not gonna be like, you know, a blue state, a red state, you know, the you know, the the the, the division of the it's gonna be like speckling. You know, speckles of different colors of different tribes that are all over, right? Interconnected. And then it says in, in the book of Yechezkel, it says that Shari Uven Echad, Shari Yehuda Echad, Shari Levi Echad, and God Himself is going to divide, that there's going to be another division when Mashiach comes. And it says not only that, but the tribe of Levi is going to have a portion in the land of Israel as well, right? And on that, why would the tribe of Levi have a portion in the land of Israel, right? The tribe of Levi, Levi is known as the Levites and the Kohanim that are doing the job of, it says, Ani Hashem Chalkecha, I am your lot, right? God says. So why would there be a lot for the tribe of Levi, and why is there this interconnection of lots where everyone is able to have, like, you know, a, ve a very diverse portfolio where they have, you know, investments here and investments there? And invest, they have all these different, like, you know, what, what's what's the idea behind of it, behind all of that? And and so the i the idea is explained uh, by the Rebbe in Hasidus, that the idea of lot and the ultimate lot is when in the time to come. That means the, the time of redemption, which is basically our highest fate. Our highest fate, the highest thing that we could actually actualize and realize is the potentiality of our soul. And when is our soul going to actually fully be activated? Right? V'sham na'aseret zoncha. That there, in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, time of redemption, that's when we're, we're going to activate the truth of our souls. Like now, we're activating, it's like we're, some people are 10% active, some people are half a percent active, some people are 30% active, but like, we're all not fully charged, you know? The battery isn't like, you know, activated, right? Because... Because we're still in a time of exile. But in the time of redemption, right, there's going to be a full activation of our soul, right? But that activation of the soul is going to be actualized within a body and within a place and time, right? And it maybe goes a little bit to what Michelle was mentioning before, that it's not a removal of oneself from this world, it's actually a, a, a full identification of our mission in living on our highest potential in this world, right? Whereas now, like, we're doing our best, right? Everyone is doing their best. And we're on a place of destiny that we are hopefully realizing what our fate is, right? On a deeper level, we realize that this is, you know, we're, uh, we're surrendering, to that fate, right? To Hashem, basically, who's above our intellect. Because if we're only going by what makes sense, so then we're doomed, first of all, to come back again. And we're doomed to live a pretty sad life. Even, even if we may have like everything, we may have millions of dollars, but it's like, but if we think that we did it, that we're the masters of our own ship and that there isn't a bigger fate over here and we're not uh, responsible to the one that is the master of the world, then we're hiding and we're hiding and, and, and 
and we think that we're living our fate, right? Our life by amassing more and more money, by amassing more and more pleasure, more and more power. And that's my fate. And, you know, that's it. You know, I'll, I'll maybe I'll leave, I'll leave the money over to my kid or, and fate is not how much money you have in your bank, right? Fate is not, you know, how many houses you have, you know, fate is not how, how much people think, you know, you, you know, you, you are, or you do, or you know, you know, at work or whatever it is, fate, that's, that's right. Fate is, is, is me, right? Here and now and Hashem, right? That is that 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 is fate, right? That the the goral, which is above our intellect, that is who we are. The one is fate. The one is in fate. The, okay. the 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 how to get there and the lessons learned is I grew up in this childhood that I needed this lessons. I had these set, set of parents. I needed those lessons. I had to have those you know that those family members go to that school, be picked and bullied by that kid or that teacher and, you know, go through all those things that a lot of times are covered up and uh, that are hidden. And then another bully is going to come up, but they're just going to have a different, you know, a different face and it's going to come up somewhere else until we actually face that place that we don't want to, but that's our fate. That's our goral to actually explore that, right? And to reveal that potentiality that's that's that we don't even know about. So that is the the um, lot of the land. So the lot of the land in the division was just divided, you know, when 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 the Israelites first entered the land of Israel, it was divided. And then there was a, in the time of Yechezkel, in the time that we are entering, there's a division that basically says, you know what? It's not a contradiction for you to have whatever, whatever it is that you want to have and you can have, and it's deserving of you to have, and you should have, right? And it's not a contradiction. Because God wants you to have that. And that's where the tribes have, you know, fertile types of, of land and some that are in the mountains, some that are in the desert, some that are in, you know, by the water. And you have it all. And you're still living with your highest. Because that is, that is really the highest. That is really redemption. Redemption is the connection of the the full physical material world and the spiritual and by knowing that there's only one there is only hashem that there's only that is that is the the true unity right of 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 hashem echad of god is one right that's the ultimate fate goral that we actually get to and that's why it says that we have a fate, we have a goral where we actually live. You know, where we go, where we're where we live right now was destined. And you just there's 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 something there, right? That you're that you're there, that your physical body and your soul are there in this physical location. For now, nothing is, but that is. That is decided, right, from the highest levels. So our physical, our material, and our spiritual are one, and they're decided upon, right? And uh, and our destiny, right, leads us to reveal that oneness. 
right? Through our experiences, through our shortcomings, through our successes, through every person that we meet, through everything that we see. It's all, it's all just this reminder, right, of that. Do, do we have some choice in that process? Um, you know, Absolutely. knowing? Absolutely. Okay. okay. And, and that's where awareness comes in. Because when we are aware of, you know, there's there's destiny that we choose and we choose it from default. And I think uh, Avigal is kind of saying that, you know, in a way of, you know, about fate, that, that destiny could lead us to fate, to a fateful place. Yes. And that's that's definitely, but we call it fate. We call it God, but but it's basically our choices, right? Whereas Whereas you kind of get it wrong. Guess what? You have to come back again and hopefully you'll learn a lesson. And, you know, and so the quicker that we learn it, and it's not really, really about quicker, and it's never too late. But when, but when we are aware of the lesson, so then we've learned the lesson and that's it. Like we've let that go. We've let that bully out of our life because we've, you know, we've released that, you know that trauma that 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 place and the act of releasing that is significant in our evolving into our highest fate right so we could be aware of the of and that's really the highest level of 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 prayer right and of learning torah and being connected to god and and you know that we are like King David says, gorali, that you lead my lot. And King David was lived his life as thinking about his fate. Right? It was like, it's a that's what I'm here for. I'm in this lifetime to figure it out. So I'm I'm here to fail. I'm not, you know, I don't want to squander and you know and say, oh, that's it. You know, I'm you know, we're, we're here. And I want to, I want to, I want to figure out what I'm doing here, right? What is, what is my, what is my fate? Not what I think my destiny is, because a lot of people think that their destiny is about themselves, right? About what they could reach, what they could do, but that destiny is something that's that's associated with their minds, right? It's something that I think that I should have, but the truth is. Fate says, like, you are meant for this, which we don't, we can't fully grasp, but we can grasp at times through the lessons of destiny. Abigail? If we knew what was to come, it wouldn't be very fun. It would be, you know, like seeing the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As the coming attractions. You got to that's why we live our lives to see No, what's but we want next. we want a predictable show. We, well, we, of course we we'd like that, yeah. but ultimately life is such a surprise. Right. So if we take take it like that, so then that's that's great. And sometimes it's not a pleasant surprise. And sometimes it's just beyond our imagining. And that's what wonder is. That's, yeah, exactly. And if we can maintain wonder, that's that's our greatest gift. Mm. Love that. Beautifully said. And that's, and wonder in a sense is, is emuna, like we were saying before, like to realize fate, again, goral, is is emuna, right? Is to have a sense of faith. That and we say this every morning in modani. Wake up in the morning. What's the first thing that we say? Modani lefanecha melechai v'kam shechzarta bi nishmati v'chemla raba emunatecha. 
that God, you return to me, my soul, with your emuna. That's the first thing that, that, that we say. So we have this clean slate to connect to our soul's mission today. Have you, have you got? I got an insight in Matovu Ohalacha Yaakov Mishkanotecha Yisrael that from a humble tent, you know, in the mind of Jacob, but if we have the mind of Yisrael, that tent becomes a holy dwelling place. Mm. And that's the gift of wonder. Beautiful. I love that. I just came up with that last night. It just came to me. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. What did you say? Matovo Yaakov of Mishkenotech at a deeper level is Israel when you have awareness. So then so then you actually enjoy your dwelling place, right? It's when you have Israel. It's beautiful. So yeah, thank you so much, uh Sally Des Um Bar Hashem. So yeah, difference between faith, fate, and destiny, right? And who was Pinchas, and who was Zimri, and who was, uh, what is what is the idea of the lot? You know, getting getting our lots, and realizing that wherever we are, we're we're coming closer and closer to our true lot, and Hashem is our lot bringing us to the level of closer to times of redemption, right? Where the lot, a contradiction of just a spiritual lot, almost like with, with Pinchas and being an angel becomes like, you know, not about leaving this world, but about coming back into this world and actually fully, fully actualizing everything that there is in this world, because everything that there is in this world is really, a, is really a gift that Hashem gives to us, and we have the we have the ability to 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 fully enjoy it, right? Which is what God is really giving to us. But again, not enjoying it just for ourselves, but enjoying it for that level of our our lot, Hashem, right? Being fully embodied within this world, right, and within our within our lives. I just, from what you said, it took on the who is happy, one who is happy with their lot. Is that is? Oh wow! <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Avigail. You're 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 hitting them today. <laughs> Amazing, beautiful. You're inspiring it. That's why yeah, I love to yeah. come to this class. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. So, pleasure. <laughs> so, I want to wish you guys, everyone, a Shabbat Shalom, and uh, and many blessings for uh, for uh, our travels here, right? And uh, and we're all, you know, we're all getting to our ultimate lot, right? And I love that. Who's happy? The one, um, right? Someone who's happy with their lot. So to connect to our lot and not to connect to some distant out there thing, right? A lot of times the lot is when we close our eyes, right? And we say Shema, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lokein, Hashem Echad. That's where the deepest joy really resides, right? Not somewhere outside of ourselves. It's inside of ourselves. All right, my friends. So with that, we're going to sign off. Wishing you a beautiful Shabbat. And same to you and Shabbat your family. Shalom, everyone. Blessings. Shalom.